Hello and welcome to the RPG Academy podcast. I am Michael and I'm here tonight with my first ever unboxing video. So probably going to be a little rough. Uh, but if you have been paying any attention to my Twitter feed or listening to the podcast or just been in like a 20 foot radius of me, then you've probably heard me talking about the new game that I've been waiting on for about a year now. It's called Batman Gotham City Chronicles. It's from Monolith and it is a asymmetrical mini board game game uh, where one player takes on the role of the overlord though for this game it probably should be like nemesis or something uh, and you take on the role of the bad guys and there's different scenarios that you play through with the other players taking on the roles of your favorite heroes batman robin nightwing so on and so forth uh, the kickstarter was humongous by far the biggest kickstarter i've ever been a part of uh, well over i think four million dollars or something just crazy and i got just excited about the, the Kickstarter. I love Batman. Uh, I play the Conan game by Monolith, which this is sort of the revised and refined mechanics of that game. Don't really have a lot of connection to Conan. Don't have any problems with it, but it's not really my cup of tea. Uh, but Batman is. Love the Batman. Or the Batman, as some people say. Uh, so I was, I was all in. And literally for the Kickstarter, I was all in. Uh, which means that I get the the base set as well as all the expansions that were created as stretch goals, which there were many, and I finally got the game today. So I am super jazzed to jump in and go through the box. So I'm going to, uh, first of all, show off what the the uh, Kickstarter image is. So you can, you can see uh, all the cool heroes, all the cool villains, Gotham in the background, and um, yeah, it's really super cool. So I've moved some cameras around, and if I've done this correctly, oh, there it is. You should be able to see the box. I have no idea how well the camera's gonna work once this starts happening, and we start actually uh, the, the quote unquote unboxing aspect, uh, but hopefully it'll work out. So uh, bear with me as I get started. Before I get too far into it, I did also wanna mention that uh, Monolith, um, don't really know them more than being part of the Kickstarter, but they seem to be pretty cool people. Uh, they've been trying really hard to make this process of waiting for the game as, as um, streamlined as possible and as easy as possible. And one of the things that they did that I really liked is they put out a bunch of player aids. And these are available through download links associated with the current Kickstarter. And it basically, I, I laminated these, but they, they made them available to print. And I... Made a bunch of copies, so there should be enough copies for all the different players who might want to play. And there's basically like the breakdown of how the rules work for the good guys and the bad guys. And then there's a list of all the different skills and abilities that you might have on your characters. So when you're playing, it's just basically it's like a cheat sheet. Um, these are also going to be printed and part of a sort of a newer monthly or quarterly magazine they're putting together, which will also include additional scenarios for this game as well as others and also uh, fan main content as well. So uh, again, if you are interested in this game, uh, it's a Kickstarter exclusive, but there is a new Kickstarter starting in June, June 4th, I believe, uh, for season two, which will have new materials, new expansions available, but you can also go back and buy anything from the first Kickstarter you missed or all of it if you didn't jump in. Um, so it is Kickstarter exclusive. You shouldn't find this in retail stores. I'm sure there's some, gonna be some copies on eBay soon, but rather than paying those exorbitant prices, uh, just wait for the next Kickstarter and then go from there. So with that, give me a second. I'm gonna try not to cut myself too bad, at least as I break into it. Uh, and I see Tom has jumped on. Tom, thanks for joining me. This is my first ever unboxing video, so uh, be gentle. Da -da -da -da. So exciting. Put the knife down so I don't cut my fingers off. Doo -doo -doo -doo. This is a big box, by the way. I mean, I don't I know you can't see that on the camera, but it's a big box. Get rid of all that. Alright, so right here on the top. So yeah, so June 4th, season two on Kickstarter. Uh, I have played the Conan version of this game, really like it. Can only imagine the Batman game will be just as good, if not better, hopefully. Um, so if you missed out on the first Kickstarter, I would certainly um, 
consider jumping on. All right, so let's take a look here at what we have. Uh, so we got our dice bag. This is just a uh, part of the all-in. You get an extra set of dice, so there should be another one inside the actual game boxes. If you're familiar with the Conan version, uh, or really a lot of games like this, you should kind of know how this works. When your characters are putting together their abilities, you create a dice pool. Uh, the, the lighter colored dice are weaker, the darker are, are better for you. So black is the best ratio for number of successes. You got two four-sided sides, one one-sided side, and then a bunch of blanks. And then if you look at your white dice, basically you have four blanks and then the possibility of two different twos. Um, so yeah, so definitely uh, if you like rolling handfuls of dice, and uh, one of the reasons why I wanted the extra set of dice is, again, I do play the Conan version, and I did not get an extra set of dice, and I should have, because there are certainly many times where, especially Conan, when he's trying to make his big attacks, needs more than what comes in the standard set. Alrighty. Alright, so I'm going to try to go through somewhat in order. Uh, so I think... Aha, yes. And these lights in here are rough. So this is what the base hero version looks like. Oh man, those lights are terrible. Let me, give me a second here. So I guess I'll just pull everything out, move this box, and then that might make it look a little bit better. So here's our villain. So these two boxes, the first two, make up the core set. You have a box for heroes, a box for villains. Uh, and then, dun dun dun. All right, I'm not sure what this is yet, but we'll get into it in a minute. This is the Batmobile expansion. This is super cool. You're going to like it when I get to that one. Uh, so this looks to be the Wayne Manor um, expansion. So it's all about uh, adventures that are going to happen at Wayne Manor, including the Batcave. This is the Arkham Asylum expansion. Pretty self-explanatory. There's going to be a lot of stuff happening there at Arkham Asylum. And I think this might be the Versus. Uh, again, I'll break into it. We'll know for sure. But I think this might be the Versus expansion, which allow you to play one-on-one -on -one against each other rather than one versus. Uh, I believe it's up to three characters, which obviously could be one player. Uh, but one versus three, I think, is the standard scenarios. So let's get rid of that. And... It's a little bit better. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna go for the Batman, the Batmobile first, because that just looks super cool. Alrighty. Again, don't want to kill myself. So there are gonna be a few scenarios that will utilize the Batmobile. Um, so it can actually be represented on the game board. Uh, got our Batman specific rule book. Yeah, so you don't want to see me sit and read all this, but uh, I think we want to look at it. Got our punch tokens. I will be punching those out later and really enjoying it, possibly too much. I have some weird OCD type issues with those things, so. Oh. All right. So here we go. So this is, oh God, about five inches long, I think, maybe six. It's got actual rubber wheels. Uh, the wheels do not roll, unfortunately, but uh, there is actual rubber that can be taken off, like the tires can come off the wheel there. Uh, red plastic for the drive windows, the windshields. Fortunately, this one doesn't need to be painted because it looks pretty bad, A, as it is. So there you go. So that's uh, mini number one, Batmobile. And looks like this is just the same version of the rule book in, I believe, French. Um, the model, I believe, is a French-owned 
French based company. Okay. So here we go. So let's bring out this bad boy. Base set heroes. So the goal will be for us to actually play this on our Tuesday night games, which we generally play on Tuesdays, usually around 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, sometimes other things happen, but for the most part, we try to play some sort of board game or role-playing game on Tuesday nights on here. And then on this channel, we also do some additional stuff. Right now, mostly it's the uh, D&D 5e Water Deep Dragon Heist um, RPG which actually Tom, who's currently still the only person in chat, uh, runs, which is a lot of fun. So you should check that out. Uh, so yeah, super cool art. Uh, if you see here on the edge, it kind of wraps around. You can see the Riddler, Clayface, and Poison Ivy, which is the same as here. So basically these two boxes together kind of make a panorama of all the heroes and all the villains, which is what basically that is. Alrighty. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Nice. All right, so we got an art print. Uh, well, you can see that. Uh, basically, it looks like uh, Red Hood, Catwoman, and Batman versus Bane and some thugs. Batman art's kind of interesting. It has a very almost like, uh, you know, Batman 66 look to it. Just sort of, I don't want to say cheap, but just not as like super hyped up articulate armor. Uh, but still looks really cool. So yeah, definitely this will find a place uh, somewhere down here in the Batcave, as I like to call it, where we actually play our games and record our games. Alrighty. Then we got us a rule book. Pretty hefty. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so the monolith came out with a whole series of uh, videos for teaching how the game works, and it's about twenty minutes long total. They've broken it into ten shorter segments for each different aspect of the game. They encourage you to watch the videos to learn how to play. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> and only re reference the rule book to kind of clarify things and, and to get a little bit more in depth for how a few things work. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty hefty uh, rule book. So we need to get Rules Cop involved uh, and let Rocky read this back to front about a thousand times so that he can make sure that we're playing the game correctly. Awesome. There's some cool art here too. Tom, you're the uh, the comic book fanatic of the team. Uh, is this art from an existing property, or is this something that you think was made just for this game? <coughs> See if I can find some more. Dun, dun, dun. So again, I don't know. This art might be. Uh, from somewhere else, but you can see there the Joker has a t-shirt on that says, I killed Jason Todd, and all I got was this t-shirt. Uh, that's for you, Rich Howard. So got a hefty rule book. Here's our missions booklet. <clears throat> so again, the game is played somewhat in like a campaign mode, where you play through each scenario in order, uh, and they kind of build upon each other, the, the story. Uh, I don't believe it's a legacy game, whereas like if a character quote-unquote dies you know they're going to be alive later or any items that you collect in one you still have in the other I, I don't believe that's how it works uh, but each scenario is basically shows you the map that will be involved the original layout for all the tokens and all the enemies uh, if you're playing the overlord you have a page that kind of tells you how your side should be set up it'll tell you who goes first whether it's the good guys or the bad guys um, and if there's any specific uh, win conditions for this particular scenario because a lot of them, it's not just, you know, kill everybody on the board, you win. Uh, one in particular that they highlight in some of the videos is there's like bombs that are being set, I think, in the sewers. And your job is to make sure they do not get armed and detonated. So at any time, if X number of bombs are either armed or, or already detonated, you lose. 
uh, if you go through so many turns without that happening, the heroes win. So, very cool. Very, very excited to get into that. Uh, so again, here's our original dice that came with the game. Should be exactly the same as our additional. Actually, it looks like there's a few more. So it looks like we have like maybe two and a half sets. I don't know. Hopefully there's enough. Uh, here are our item cards. So this is the one of the things, again, if you played the Conan version, um, certain scenarios, these will be available like on the board. They'll be placed in certain places and your characters can pick them up. Um, certain characters will start with certain ones. Um, one of the things, if again, if I remember correctly, if you have a utility belt, which many of the characters will, then you have the option of choosing what items go in your utility belt for that particular uh, scenario. So you have a little bit of choice before the game starts on how you do your loadout, which could obviously hopefully make the game easier or harder, or at least different, so that you can play through the same uh, scenarios more than once and change a few things. Uh, so I'm not going to break all these out just yet. I, I'm not here in a little bit, but uh, that's basically what all of these are. Uh, here are energy cubes. Uh, again, if you're familiar with the monolith version, uh, it's going to be very similar. We'll, I'll show you the details here in a second, but these cubes represent your character's ability to do things in the game. As the overlord, they will have a certain number they can use to activate models uh, or minions or you know characters, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and so they limit how much you can do. Uh, they also represent hit points for our main characters. The Generally the bad guys have, like the thugs, have like one and you hit them. If you get damage past their armor, they're out. But as the heroes, it's not going to work that way. So as you take actual damage, you have cubes that go out of your playable area into a wound zone. And I'm, I'm guessing there are ways to get them back out. But if not, that represents your hit points. If you ever get all of your energy cubes into your wound zone, then your character is out. Um, again, if I remember correctly, I don't think in this game characters can actually die. I believe they're just knocked out. And they're either out of the game for that scenario unless something brings them back in. <clears throat> All righty. So this is the part that, for probably a lot of people, might be the most exciting. Uh, this game has a ton of models for the different characters, different alternate versions. Um, so again, I'm, I'm going to guess that all the ones that are here are represented under, it's like a box of chocolates. Um, so you can see on here, we've got a couple different Robins. There's a Tim Drake and a Damian Wayne, Nightwood, Nightwing, Jason Todd is the Red Hood, Bat Cow. This was a big thing on the Kickstarter. I'll be honest. I don't get it. I don't understand, but it was like a huge, super big deal. Everybody on the Kickstarter was going crazy about it. Uh, this is one that got added in, um, as like a stretch goal. Batwoman, Batgirl, Catwoman, Alternate Catwoman, Huntress, Spoiler, Black Canary, Katana, so on and so forth. Um, and then we also have just like our uh, citizens, bystanders, guards, cops, SWAT, that kind of thing. So underneath, aha, uh -huh, here you go. Here are our actual models. So I believe the color scheme is that the orange represent like the um, uh, civilians, NPCs, if you will. So, and I, I'm sure this camera is not going to show these very well. Uh, but here we have, uh, let's see if I can do it this way. Uh, oh, not too bad. There we go. So we have a, a woman with her purse, probably in line at the grocery store, the bank. And then bad things are going to happen. Uh, here we have what looks to be like maybe, well, again, I don't know how well to how to do this, but kind of like a homeless guy, you know, as you would see on the streets of Gotham, possibly by a oil can that's burning as uh, Bruce Wayne is about to go in and talk to Falcone uh, if you watch Batman Begins. So it looks like we got some cops in here, SWAT team, bomb squad. Uh, these are like drones. That might be, I'm sure, certain scenarios will have them. But we're not interested in those. Who cares about those losers? We're here for the heroes. So Tom also seemed very excited about Bat, Bat Cow. So here you go. Here is Bat Cow. 
Now, I have never before painted minis. It's something I've just never got involved with. But in anticipation of this game, I started. I bought a bunch of paint, and I started with my Conan game as sort of a starter set. Uh, I've been working my way through. I've almost painted all of those models. And I'm not good at it. Still not good at it. But I'll admit that the, uh, the, the models look a lot better painted than not. Uh, particularly at what I would say table height, like you know, when they're on the table over here. When you get up super close to your eyes, they, they're not going to look as good with the paint job. Um, but I'm very happy with them so far. So I'm looking forward to breaking these out and starting to paint them. However, what seems might be counterintuitive, I'm actually going to start with the bystanders and, you know, the cops and you know the little uh consoles and all that kind of good stuff because again i'm not great at it yet and i kind of want to get better at it before i start painting the ones that i'm going to be super concerned about so here we have the dark knight returns batman uh, feel like great uh this one comes on a couple different bases you can put them on so you can go on this rock wall base or this more traditional I guess somewhat more traditional uh, regular base. Oh, I dropped him. Hmm. Can't seem to get that one to fit in there very well. There we go. So I'm looking forward to painting that one, but I want to wait till I got a little, little more uh, experience under my belt with some of the other ones before I break into that. So Again, we've got all the heroes, Katana, Huntress, um, is it um, Azrael? Is that what his name is? The, the, the one who took over when Batman broke his back? It is Azrael, right? I want to say Azazel, but I think that's something different. I think it's Azrael. Um, but I believe this, this is not Azrael in the bat armor. This is him in his own costume with a flaming sword, apparently. Um... Looks like Green Arrow. Gotta love Green Arrow. Uh, just uh, an alternate Batman figure. Because again, this thing, the Kickstarter went insane. Again, it hit over $4 million. So there are tons and tons and tons of different models. Uh, again, I believe this is the, the Red Hood model, which might make Tom happy. Uh, he has a minigun, because you know, you could never, never go wrong with a minigun, I guess. Alrighty. So, all right. So this is how the game is primarily played. Um, you have these that are called your bat tablets, and they represent the standard abilities that any character can use. So you have like your melee attack, ranged attack, manipulation, thought. And then you have over here movement, re-roll, which is just a function of the game. Uh, and then your defense. Uh, Tom wants to see Green Arrow again, so stand by. I'm trying to find some way to make it stand out a little better. Here. Let me try this. See if this will work a little better. There we go. I think that looks okay. Huh. Come on, auto zoom. <laughs> You'd think I would know I couldn't see the camera, but I actually can. I'm not very good at this. All right. There we go. For some reason I can't get it to like, uh, there we go, not bad. Uh, so that one should be a fun one to paint. Looking forward to that one. All right. So you can have up to three quote unquote players. Um, so Green Arrow, I think was another one of the stretch goals that got added in. Uh, there was like some fan or, you know, basically backer polls and stuff where different people, you could vote for which ones you wanted to add in their suggestions which is how Bat-Cow got in there. Uh, so I believe Green Arrow was one of those. 
So you have your, your bat tablets, and then you have all these different character cards. And these obviously um, correlate to all the different models that we've already seen. So you got your Batmans, your Catwomans, Commissioner Gordon, Robin, Nightwing, Huntress, Batgirl, so on, so on and so forth. And then for the scenario, you either choose who you want. I believe some scenarios tell you who you can pick. You would take your character card. It fits into your bat tablet. And now there's correlations between this particular character's abilities and the things that your characters can do. Uh, you have a maximum number of cubes that you can put that limits how many times and how powerful their attacks can be. Uh, it, it'll give them how many cubes they start with and how many they get back in between turns what their armor is to start with, how many rerolls they can get, and so on and so forth. Um, so there's a lot of uh, custom customability, customization, that's what we're looking for, uh, with the scenarios. If it doesn't tell you who to play, you pick your own, you can interchange these, play your favorites however you would like. And um, so there's only three that come with the base game. And that's one of the things I know we've been talking about on the Discord for the uh, for the future Kickstarter is the ability to buy extras of these. Not necessarily to play more than three versus one, but uh, with all the base game and all the expansions, it's very easily that you could have two or maybe three games going at the same time out of the one box. Um, so if we were able to get additional copies of just these, then that would allow... Um, people to play which I mean honestly you could like you know photocopy this uh, or some other way to, to make your own if you really wanted to but these are nice I like them so I would happily pay monolith you know a couple bucks for a few extras of these for different things I want to do um, Tom since you're the only one here still do you have a particular character you want me to go over uh, yeah here's Azrael oh, and good thing about this too is this will help me with the painting it'll help me kind of get an idea of what colors I should go go for um, here's Batman with some really jacked up teeth. Don't know what that's about. It's Batman Year 100. Uh, here's Dark Knight Returns Batman. Katana. Oh, here you go, Tom. Red Hood. I'll pick out here's Yeah, here's Green Arrow. So let me switch again here. So again, here's the character card for this particular character. Let me... Uh, and on the back, it's got some, you know, information about them as well. So, here we go. So, over here, so for... Man, I am not good at this backwards camera stuff. Um, so, you can see for melee attack, um, he has a maximum of four, and his starting die is, is orange or yellow. Nope. Which is... Um, not the most powerful. Black would be the most powerful than red, so it's like the third. And um, he's also trained in martial arts, which is one of the skills they have, which I believe if you succeed at an attack, you get an additional bonus for that. And there's different different levels and different types of martial arts you can get. Uh, for range, surprise, surprise, they get he gets red dice, which he only has three, but he also has red, which means they're better. And he has these two other abilities over here. Um, which I would have to, you know, consult my cheat sheet for, but I'm guessing it has something to do with like precise shot, shooting into combat, not being affected by hindering, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, he starts with 10 energy each turn, or he starts with 10 energy at the end of the game, and then you have to choose whether you are active or passive. I think there's different words for it down here. Uh, if you're resting, you get more energy cubes back at the beginning of your turn, but you have less options of what you can do. Basically, I don't think you can actually attack. Or you can take the active version, you get less, but you have all your abilities. You have some movement and encumbrance, so on and so forth. And then there's a couple things up here, too. Again, I'll have to read the actual uh, instruction booklet to know what all of those actually are. Dun, dun, dun. Alrighty. And then lastly in here. We have the game boards. Oh, got switch cameras. There we go. So we have our game board. So when we are setting up our game, each uh, scenario will tell us which one of these to start with. 
these are huge and hopefully pretty sturdy because I don't want to uh, screw them up yet. So here we have, it looks like a, like a warehouse, probably Ajax Chemicals or some such. Uh, it, does, it would fit on the table if I didn't have those other boxes in the way, but hopefully this will give you an idea of how it would work. Um, and again, if you played these types of games before, you might already be kind of familiar, but each of these white lines kind of delineate an area of the board. Uh, you have certain abilities to move that, you know, you move from area to area. Uh, one of the things that they did that's super helpful, and I don't know how well it's going to show up, but uh, like this area right here, you can see there's a little white dot. And then around it, there's an I and then an E and then a C. And if you look across around the board, you might find another one that has one of those numbers or letters i'm not good at, at numbers and letters uh, like here for example there's an i so that tells me that there's a line of sight between these two this one's pretty easy probably could have figured that one out myself but it does make it easier particularly when there's elevations involved um, so like if you're on top of these barrels here there's an e which means i would have line of sight to this one to that one because they both have an e on it uh, where i might not know that myself because I'm not sure how to account for elevation. Same thing, there's an I here, and on this shorter stack of barrels, there's an I. So that it just kind of helps you figure out where you actually have line of sight for abilities that you would want to use and that kind of such. Um, there, are, there are rules in this version for elevation changes, for jumping up or climbing down. Uh, if you do it poorly, you can take damage. Certain characters have abilities that will allow them to do it easier or without taking damage, that kind of thing. So this 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 game particularly at least this set comes with two large double-sided maps uh, so again on the other side looks like we're outside of a building may maybe that warehouse or just outside of a building uh, cop cars are out on the street that kind of thing all righty but batman is only batman because of Batman's villains. So let's see what we have here. Okay. Good times. All right. So this would be our our Overlord's board. I think there's a name for it. I'm forgetting right now. Um, but essentially, when you're playing the Overlord, this is what you use to uh, manage your side of the game. Down here is called the River, and you have these different tiles that represent your bad guy models and they are placed here and it's kind of hard to see right now but there's numbers so there's a one two five it goes all the way up to eight the number above the tile tells you how many um, energy cubes you have to pay to activate that tile uh, the tile can represent one model so like bane probably has his own uh, joker probably has his own or it can represent a whole group of models like thugs and minions when you activate that tile you get to utilize every model that is associated with that tile in some cases you might have more than one like in the conan for example sometimes you'll play there'll be pirates there'll be four different pirate tiles each tile represents five pirate that kind of thing uh, the tiles which i'm sure are probably in this box um, will tell you what that character can do as far as what what their strengths are their their attacks their defense that kind of thing um, there are some inserts here that that will kind of tell you um, your energy cubes you have to start with, energy that you've used. There'll be a token here for each scenario to tell me how many I get back at the start of my turn. I have a limited number of resources I can use for re-rolls and for defense and that kind of thing. And then this is a hit point tracker. Again, it's, I know it's hard to see it on the video, but it goes one, two, three, four, up to ten. Uh, so if you're playing a, a minion bag, or excuse me, a, a bad guy, like, yeah, I keep going to Bane for some reason. I think it's just because I've seen that model before. Uh, Bane may have, let's say, six hit points. 
So there'll be a little token that I would put here in the six slot. And as we do damage to Bane, I will bring it down to represent their hit points. And once Bane gets to zero, then Bane's model will be taken off of the board. Da -da -da -da. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Ooh, more tokens. Alrighty. Yep, oh, yep. Yeah, see, it goes like that. There we go. So basically that's kind of what it would look like. So you'll be able to see a little bit more how that's going to look like. I think I have that backwards. <laughs> there we go. That looks a little better. Um, so here is a tile, for example. Let me switch back over. So this is the tile for Mr. Freeze. And it has all of Mr. Freeze's um, abilities on there. Armor how many hit points they have, movement, which is there. Um, any special abilities, again, I'll have to look at the cheat sheet to know what all these different symbols mean. But as far as melee goes, nope, over here, uh, it says one red, that's like no ranged um, manipulation and thought. And then there is the basically the defeated version, which you can see it looks like it's cracked down here. So when the, the tile is in the river, go back to my other camera, Nope, wrong one. Aha. Um, so when the tile is in the river, for example, as I play them, they go to the end. Let's get a few more in here so this makes some more sense. So let's say, for example, this is what my river looked like um, in this particular game. I have like, every one of these backwards, of course. There we go. All right. So this was my river, and I wanted to activate the penguin. It would cost me five of my energy to activate the penguin. And then I could then have the penguin's model do whatever I wanted it to within the card. Once I have activated the penguin, I would pick his card up, move it to the end, and then slide everything together. So now the penguin would cost seven if I wanted to use the penguin again. But Hush and the owls have gotten cheaper. So that's kind of how the, the overlord manages their resources is it's cheaper to activate these. And basically everything cycles down and gets cheaper over time. Um, which is kind of cool, makes it fun for the Overlord. Uh, it does set up some interesting narrative situations. Uh, we ran into the Conan game once where one of the heroes rushed into a, a group of bad guys and were pretty much surrounded. But at that particular moment, it was really expensive to activate those models, so I didn't. So even though the hero was surrounded, I didn't have the energy I needed to actually make them pay for that blunder, if, as you were. Or as it was, I should say. Um, so sometimes it, you know it's kind of interesting that that's a bit of the strategy they can come in if you're paying attention from the hero side. Is you know maybe you jump into the middle of a bunch of heroes hoping that either a I won't activate them as the overlord, or b that I do, and it costs me a lot, which means I have less for other things like defense rerolls or other models. So um, it's just an inter interesting aspect of the rules and, and the strategy. I think the more we play it, we'll kind of get into and. Uh, we'll see how that adds to the game. So, yeah, I'll go through and get all those organized here in a little bit. Looks like we have uh, an escape tunnel, no, and a bank, and a grate. Uh, I don't know what that is. But again, what we care about are the models. Once again, our box of chocolates on the outside, we have Scarecrow, Wraith, Jason Todd, Hush, Two-Face, Red Hood Classic, Bane, Scarecrow, Firefly, Killer Moth, Penguin, Harley Quinn, Ratmaster, Mr. Freeze, a different Harley Quinn, uh, The Riddler from Year Zero, Ra's al Ghul, or Ra's al Ghul, I don't know how you say that, 
Uh, Orphan, Black Mask, Talon, The Riddler, The Joker, Deathstroke, Deadshot, Poison Ivy, Bud and Lou. Then we have uh, our Owls with Handgun, Owls with Katana, uh, Carnivorous Plants, I'm guessing that's for Poison Ivy, some Prisoners, some other thugs, Red Hood Gang, Killer Croc, different Killer Croc, Dr. Death, Tusk, Mr. Bloom, Solomon Grundy, etc., etc. So all the hero models were blue, all the NPC civilians were orange, and our base for our villains is gray. So here we have Man Bat. And again, this thing is huge. Oh, yeah, I'll turn this a little bit. Let me get a little bit easier. Like this thing, it's a big model. It's going to be fun to paint, but uh, hard to paint as well. Um, here we have one of our Killer Crocs. I know how to make that zoom in better. Oh well. Uh, tusk, which you know, basically it's kingpin with tusk, right? Uh, Clayface, another one that's going to be a lot of fun to paint, and of course. Bane, again, the one I keep referencing because uh, I don't know why. I think I, I recently listened to a podcast where they were talking about the Dark Knight Rises, so I think that's probably why. Or, you know, yeah, that's the Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Um, so I didn't realize that actually someone up, uh, Despinamite. Sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, Batman Year 100 was an Elseworld story set in the future, where apparently they don't have good dentistry because the teeth were jacked up. All right. And then we have a whole bunch of other models here. Uh, this looks like a bunch of different thugs. So again, we got some carnivorous plants, different uh, thugs and gang members for the different various villains. So apparently one of our models um, comes with a, a detachable net that you can glue on or not. Because if you glue it on, it won't fit back into these cases. Uh, but I'm probably not going to keep them in these cases. Once I paint them, I'm probably going to find a way to, uh, to display them in some way. So here is, I believe this is Scarecrow with uh, the fear gas sort of all around him. Man, I am so bad at this. Anyway, I think it looks crazy cool. Um, yep, there's Roz, Raish, Poison Ivy. So as sad as it is, these are probably the ones I'm going to start painting. Uh, because there's tokens here that are like, basically like a computer monitor, monitoring station. Which is actually probably going to be really hard with all dials and buttons. I probably will not do a very good job. Um, but I would rather mess up on these than any of the others. So that's what I'm going to start with. Uh, so Tuesday when we play this game, uh, if I have anything painted, it will probably be those. So that's a lot of stuff. Uh, that's the base game. That's what you would get for the, the standard, again, core game that you would get through the Kickstarter. Um, I've already showed the Batmobile expansion, but let's check out a couple of the others. There's at least one model in particular I'm pretty excited about. I want to show you if I can find. All right. All right. I'm going to go to the Wayne Manor because I think this is where that model is. And normally I would call them miniatures, but apparently they're models. From at least as I've been watching all these painting tutorials, um, everybody calls them models. So that's why I started calling them, because I'm a follower. Now let's do what I'm told. Oh, 
feels like Christmas morning. Wrapping. Maybe that can be a stretch goal for the next Kickstarter is to have them wrap them in Christmas present wrapping or birthday wrapping, I guess. You can celebrate Christmas. Alrighty. So this is the Wayne Manor expansion. So it's going to have some additional rules for these particular scenarios. Uh, it has, includes, I guess, the scenarios for this one in particular. So we have additional character cards. Here we have Alfred, Batman the Thrasher suit, Bruce Wayne, Julia Pennyworth, Oracle, Red Robin, and Batman. So you might want to maybe uh, tease about which particular model you think I might be interested in showing here. So we got some additional maps. So these are going to be for whoops, specifically uh, Wayne Manor and the Batcave. These are a little bit smaller. And then we have our additional... Tiles, which some of these are repeats from others, so I, I don't know if they have different stats because um, there's multiple Riddlers and there's Ra's al Ghul. Uh, we'll figure that out later. But yes, there's a gigantic T-Rex model. So here we've got again our uh, item cards that are going to be specific to this these scenarios. But uh, uh, yeah, there's there's this guy. I don't know how often this is actually going to come up in the game, but seriously, what the bleep? That's a, that's a giant T-Rex. It's like a foot long. So that's another one that should be fun to paint. Uh, probably won't get a lot of detail, but it'll be uh, kind of a greenish color. And it'll, uh, it'll look like a giant T-Rex. Pretty exciting. Uh, so then again, we have the other models. The Thrasher suit. Uh... Oh, bunch of bats. Just a bunch of bats flying around. Um, kind of hard to tell, but yeah. Bunch of bats flying around. I don't know how I'm going to store all this yet. Again, I have some, like I said before, a little bit of like OCD for like storage and trying to figure out how everything's going to go together. And I don't know if I want to compile this all into one big... Situation, um, or if I want to try to keep the expansion separate so that I don't confuse myself when I'm trying to, to play. But uh, based on previous examples, I probably will put them all together but find some way to differentiate between them. All right, so yeah, again, here we have our Arkham Asylum rule book for any specific Arkham Asylum rules, all the different scenarios or scenarios, depending on how you want to say that. Uh, that will take place specifically in Arkham Asylum. So here we have some additional minis. We got a the Joker, which is apparently also Clayface, because uh, dude's ripped in this. Tweedledee, Tweedledum, Hugo Strange, Professor Pig, uh, Joker's gang members, Crazy Inmates, uh, the Mr. Joe Joker, Zaz, uh, and Jervis Tetch, which I believe is the Mad Hatter, because at least that's what he's wearing clothes that makes me think that's what he is. All right, so we have our maps for Arkham Asylum. We have our tokens and tile cards for Arkham Asylum. And then we have our models and our item cards. So there's a uh, clay face joker or super jacked muscular 
Joker Clayface. Let's see here. Hmm. All righty. When you're almost through everything, again, I'm not going into a, a whole lot of detail. Uh, there are other people who are much better at this who have done very extensive unboxing. So if you uh, really want to get crazy deep into the weeds, there's other people out there who've, again, done this better. Um, but if there's anyone out there who is watching or listening that, that's, that's live, um, that would like for me to, again, to look at something specific or show something specific, I will certainly do my best to accommodate. Hi, right, yep. So, oh. so yeah, so this is the versus mode expansion. So we have our second um, Overlord board. I can't think there's a word for this whole thing, but I can't think of what it is right now. Uh, which also would work great because if you can, if you just wanted to have different groups playing this game at the same time, there's more than enough material. I mean, I, I, who knows if I will ever be able to play every one of these scenarios, uh, but I'm gonna try. So that's cool. Uh, so again, this is the versus. So we got our versus mode rule book. And I'm guessing there might be some scenarios. Yep. So for how we would handle that. And then we have our versus mode models, which there's not very many, it doesn't look like. Yep. We have uh, tiles. These are colored a little differently. Hopefully that makes it easier for us to know what they're for. I think this is just a filler box. Nope. Nope. More cube. These are disc energy cubes. I haven't read the versus rules, so I don't know how those go and what they mean, but I'm sure they're important. And here we have our versus mode models. Oops. I'm not doing a good job. There we go. So we, here we have our CP, GCPD, looks like SWAT team with their blast shields and uh, is that like a flamethrower? It looks like a flamethrower on his back. Maybe a proton pack. Maybe he's a ghost hunting Gotham City police person. I don't know. I've been watching that new show, so I'm a little bit behind. Uh, all right. I have no idea what this one is. Uh, wearing some gear, but also looks like maybe a zombie. So is there like a zombie arm of the uh, Gotham City Police or some such? Oh. Yeah, it's not good, but looks really cool. Hopefully, uh, hopefully as I start painting them, I will show them off as well. So that's the super quick version, and it's still been like an hour. Um, unboxing of Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Uh, pretty excited. Looks pretty awesome. I can even smile a little bit. I'm, I'm looking up here. Camera's here. I don't know why I do that. Um, but I'm excited. Uh, again, the, the goal is to start playing this Tuesday. So if you're interested in seeing some live gameplay, come back then. Or if you're watching this in the future, go back and then. Or look for the next Tuesday. I don't know. You'll figure it out. Uh, but for those of couple of you that have joined us, hopefully you Again, had a good time. I know there's a little bit of delay, so I'll wait a couple seconds. Um, again, to give if anybody has any questions or anything in particular they want me to try to point out and show, I certainly will. Otherwise, I'm going to start organizing everything and trying to get ready uh, so I can start playing. Uh, so in the meantime, again, the RPG Academy. We're primarily a role-playing game podcast because, you know, RPG Academy. Uh, but we also play a lot of board games, card games. Um, the podcast is more advice for Rolling role play games, but the YouTube channel and the Twitch has been more board gamey, with exceptions, of course. But uh, it's fun, so we keep doing it, and that's kind of our motto around here. If you're having fun, you're doing it right. Um, so hopefully, this has been fun for you. So it doesn't look like there's any questions, so I'm going to call it there. Thank you, and good night.